As civilizations moved away from the rivers and lakes, along with the rapidly dwindling frog populations, we have forgotten the royalty of the Anura and their contribution to the spiritual and cultural heritage of the world. The frog symbolizes a triad of realms, a triple aspect of creation, transformation, and rebirth, representing the stage of a frog's life. As a tadpole from water, transforming to an adult on land, and hibernating under earth or mud during winter, emerging from the underworld in the spring. This triple aspect is its most universal symbology, but by no means all that the frog represents. Magic, death, fortune, disease, rain, birth, resurrection, poison, shamanism. The frog as an amphibian could traverse water, land, and the spiritual or underworld at will. The frog is a trickster magician in some cases, and a psychopomp in others. It is one of the earliest and most prominent symbols in the ancient world, serving as the long-lost origin and prototype for some of the most recognizable themes in religion, spirituality, and royalty. The first of all the gods is new, personifying the primordial chaos and the creator of reality. From the watery abyss of creation emerged a mound. On this mound grew a lotus flower that gave birth to the first son, to Ra. Nu is the father of the gods and one of the eight primordial beings called the Ogdode. Nu is depicted as a man with an anthropomorphic frog head. Nu, Amun, He, and Kek are the four primordial frog gods. Their female counterparts are Nanet, Amunet, Hahet, and Kaket, who are depicted with serpent heads. Amun was one of the most popular gods in Egyptian religion and would be fused with Ra as Amun Ra. The mother goddess and creator of humanity in Chinese mythology is Nuwa. She molded humans from clay and is herself an aquatic deity, being the only survivor of an apocalyptic flood along with her brother Fushi. Although she is depicted as having a dragon or serpent body, her name Nu means woman and Wa is thought to mean frog. She was likely, originally, a frog goddess. In another Chinese flood myth, a god created 24 sons to dry the flood. This eventually led to drought, and the frogs decided to swallow 22 of the suns, leaving only two lights, the sun and the moon. Vietnamese, Cherokee, and Japanese myths all explain eclipses as a frog temporarily swallowing the sun or moon. In this San rock art, it appears to be the creation of man from frogs. The Penobscot, a Native American nation, have a tale of a giant frog who swallows all the water in the world, leading to drought. A hero, the first man, hunts the frog and releases the water. In an aboriginal Australian creation myth, a greedy frog swallows all the rivers and lakes. The other animals work together to return the water. In Taiwan, there is a legend of a fisherman who catches a frog and discards it, but the frog transformed into a kid and would become the founder of an important family. In Myanmar, there is a myth that humans come from two tadpoles that lived atop a hill. Aztecs depicted the Mother Earth Goddess as a frog, symbolizing the endless cycle of death and rebirth. The frog was also associated with Tlaloc, the god of rain and fertility. Mongolian legends have not only water, but all the elements created from a golden frog. Although little is known of the Olmec, they frequently depicted a frog god who eats his own shed skin. This is something frogs do as one of the most efficient renewal systems in the entire animal kingdom. It is no wonder the frog was a symbol of rebirth and transformation. In the Rig Veda, a hymn was dedicated to frogs, comparing them to priests. The frogs symbolize and call the rain from which the god Soma will emerge. Soma was a mushroom called the Amanita muscaria, and a key ingredient to a special ambrosia type of beverage of the same name. Chinese folk legends also refer to frogs as having a mushroom growing from their head, one that can offer immortality. In fact, it is because of their relationship with fungus that we get one of the names for mushrooms, usually denoting the colorful and hallucinogenic variety of mushrooms, a toadstool, named simply because frogs enjoy sitting on the wide cap of these mushrooms, in similar fashion to the lily pads and lotus flowers they often rest atop. This also suggests their older shamanic association and as spirit guides or psychopomps. Some toads were directly used as gateways to the underworld, such as the hallucinogenic Sonoran Desert Toad, and other toads around the world in the Bufo family. Every year before the Nile flooded, countless frogs would appear, marking the most important time for Egyptians. In the Egyptian religion, there is also a goddess of childbirth and fertility, named Heket, who is depicted as either a frog or has a frog head.
Amulets, rings, and lamps with frogs were popular among pregnant women to ensure an easy birth, and many mummies were buried with frog amulets as a symbol of rebirth. Haket breathed life into Horus at his birth and assisted in the resurrection of Osiris. This symbol of frogs and resurrection extended to Jesus. Among early Christians, these lamps and amulets gained the inscription, I am the resurrection. Haket would find herself in the Greek pantheon as Hecate, the goddess of magic, crossroads, boundaries, sorceries, necromancy, and the moon. She was a triple-headed goddess and would be the predominant triple moon goddess and symbol of witchcraft through the Dark Ages into modern Wiccan and neo-pagan movements. Although her main animal would be the dog, her association with the frog would never fully leave. Frogs became one of the main symbols of witches and witchcraft in medieval Europe. They were familiars of witches, used in love spells, and famously transformation. The Frog Princess is a widespread fairy tale of a beautiful princess who is transformed into a frog, or else is an enchanted being taking the form of a frog. The tale involves three princes who are seeking wives. One brother finds the Frog Princess, and through mistakes must go on a quest to redeem himself. The tale usually involves a witch of some sort, such as the Baba Yaga who always has three forms. It's similar to the Frog Prince fairy tales. Frogs are also featured in several of Aesop's fables, and the Greek comedian Aristophanes wrote a play called The Frogs, which won first place during an Athenian festival of Dionysus. In the play, Dionysus is trying to bring back Euripides from the dead, a poet who had died the year before. To summarize the only part where frogs feature, Dionysus is being led across the river Styx in the underworld by Charon, where a chorus of frogs annoy him. He gets into a debate with the frogs, and this ultimately devolves with Dionysus singing loudly back at the frogs their very chorus. The frogs involved in a tale of a journey to the underworld to bring someone back to life show us further the role of frogs as psychopomps and resurrection. A Chinese monk named Liu Haichan has a three-legged frog companion named Chan Chu. Liu Chan can fly anywhere on Chan Chu. This frog would be known as the money frog and is a popular feng shui charm for prosperity. However, Chan Chu also appears in another older myth. It is in this myth that we can confirm the triple aspect of the frog. Chan Chu represents the moon and can be seen on the surface of the full moon. She has three legs because of the three phases of the moon. She is also represented by the Little Dipper and is an aspect of Chang'e, the goddess of the moon, the wife of Hu Yi, who received the elixir of immortality. Although there are a couple of versions, Chang'e ends up with the elixir and escapes to the moon, where she was transformed into a frog as a consequence. Although she is most associated with a rabbit, the frog may be an older iteration. In any case, the frog represents lunar yin. Indeed, frogs use the full moon to coordinate breeding events, and although they generally don't migrate more than a couple of miles, they will use the sun, moon, and stars to navigate. The life cycle of the frog then symbolizes this trio of birth and water, land and fertility, rebirth and the underworld, the phases of the moon, or the triple aspect of the goddess. Slavic legend gives us water spirits called the Vojdjanoi. These are usually depicted as some sort of elder frog entity. The frog in ancient Mesopotamia represented fertility and life, and many frog artifacts have been found, which is true for most of the world. The Sumerian Babylonian trinity of gods, Nimrod, Tammuz, and Semiramis, were crowned with a frog symbol, one that also crowns Aztec gods and is used in various cultures across the ancient world, a symbol called the Flor de Lis. It is quite simply a stylized frog. The most famous use of the Flor de Lis is in French heraldry. The Merovingians used the three frog symbol, most famously King Clovis. He changed the symbol from the frogs to the Flor de Lis during his conversion supposedly from a dream or a vision. Even if the Florida Lys is directly named after the water lily, it is a symbol which is still associated with the frog who sit upon it. Brewer's Dictionary supplies more evidence of this association. The frog symbol was probably so common that it became stylized, which we can see easily in modern times with company logos. Only the origin of the symbol was forgotten, and with it the royalty the frog denoted and bestowed. The triple aspect of the frog is something we've all probably seen. The most common art, photographs, and paintings of frogs is in a trio. This is a painting I grew up with, the hidden symbolism staring at me my whole life. A frog's skin changes color before rain. Pigmented cells in their skin expand due to the humidity. 
Frogs were kept as barometers because of that. Other folklore include croaking at certain times indicating rain or the death of a frog, drought. Frog medicine is popular, such as putting a live toad in the mouth to cure thrush or wearing a dried frog to prevent epilepsy. There are many types of frogs, and some certainly have medicinal qualities and compounds on their skin that they use to protect themselves from predators, bacteria, and fungal infections. The legendary toadstones, magical stones said to be found in the skulls of some frogs, would glow in the presence of poison and could be used to cure all kinds of poisons and venoms. I imagine the toadstone is probably related to the older association of the mushroom of immortality growing from the head of a frog. In alchemy, the frog was the prima materia, the raw material that could be transmuted to anything else. It shows the creative and transformative symbols of the frog persisted. They were also used in an attempt to grow a human, called a homunculus. This parallels the creation myths of man coming from frogs. In the Old Testament is a plague of frogs sent to Egypt. In the book of Revelation, three frogs are referenced as coming out of the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. The pre-Columbian Quimbaja culture has very little that remains, save for some ornate gold artifacts, some of which are golden frogs and what appears to be a frog a mushroom goddess, suggesting this was an important figure of their beliefs. The frog is truly ubiquitous across human culture, sometimes worshipped as the creator deity or as the bringers of rain and fertility. The phases of life, death, and rebirth, travelers between worlds, tricksters and magicians, transformation and resurrection, medicine and poison, luck and prosperity, princes, princesses, trinities, shamanism, and the moon itself. The Anura have special significance to humans. They are irreplaceable in the ecosystem, and they are an ancient race of creature, such as this great Beelzebufo. However, frogs are royal because uncontested, for their thrones sit upon the lotus and toadstool, the most sacred of Earth's immortal fruit. It is the kind of casual regality that is unquestionable as they lounge on the gateways between worlds, absorbing the entheogenic substances through their bellies, no doubt. Royal psychopomps croaking up stories we could only dream of seeing. And for all of life's most wild and inexplicable situations we find ourselves only in, only one reasonable suggestion can be posed. Oh, <laughs> what? Where are we? I don't know. What did we do last night? Mayhaps we drank juice of the Elder Toad. I doubt it. 